Hallelujah. Everyone raise your hands and welcome the precious Holy Spirit in this place. Tell him, precious Holy Spirit, I welcome you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. Good morning, precious Holy Spirit. How much I love you. How much I enjoy being in your presence. How much I adore you. Have a person word with the precious Holy Spirit. Just love him. Just love him. Just love him. It's the greatest promise. <laughs> Just love him. Holy Spirit, we love you. Spirit of the living God, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Spirit of truth. We love you, Holy Ghost. We love you. We love you. We love you. We adore you. The one who searches the deeper things of God. We love you. We love you, Holy Spirit. Come and reign. Come and reign, Holy Spirit. Come and reign, Spirit of the living God. Come and reign this morning. Come and reign. Come and reign. Holy Spirit reign. We welcome you now to come and reign. Come and reign. Holy Spirit reign. We welcome you now to come and reign. the person of the Holy Spirit. Let me see your hands. When we were in primary school, every time we had visitors coming, we sang songs showing them that we are happy to have them. And they also awarded us gifts for showing them much welcome through our songs. I used not to be a good singer, I used to be a good dancer. I remember they used to give me gifts. Every time we had visitors, singing was not my thing, but dancing was my thing. I gave the best of what I had. This morning, as we sing, welcoming the precious Holy Spirit in our midst, the one who searches the deeper things of God, the greatest promise of the church. Can you do the best to make him feel welcome? When you feel him welcome, he will award you for that. He will appreciate you for that. If human beings can award us for feeling welcome, how much more will it be? If you do that to the precious Holy Spirit, the one who was behind the rising, the uprising of Daniel, a man from a poor background, the Holy Spirit raised him and served in three governments. A man who was behind the uprising of David, a son of a farmer. 
and became the greatest king. The one who was behind the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we sing it from the bottom of our hearts? Can you do what you can if you can dance, dance? If what you can do is jumping, do that. If you can do, is run on the floor to show him that he's welcome. Do it. When you do it, you cannot leave this place the same way you came. You want to leave this place a different you. Let's sing it together. pastor told me that I was going to speak today that was on Wednesday night I didn't know what I was going to speak but every time the pastor tells me you're going to speak I always know that there is a word God wants to deliver to his people and every time I'm to minister many of you know. Every time I'm to minister, he said, signs will follow us. I always have a sign of the rain. It will rain either before or during the service or after the service. When I saw the rain yesterday, I knew that the heavens are up to something and there is something gonna happen today I prepared a message yesterday this morning I got a dream I was speaking pastor Robert was speaking to me and he said it's so low 
do you know that this is a time, this is a season for shifting? Do you think people understand? I got to understand that we have come into a shifting season. I don't know if you're the right people I'm supposed to speak to, but one thing I heard, this is a shifting season. That was a prophetic dream. This is a shifting season. Can you declare this is my season of shifting? Declare it, this is my season of shifting. This is my season of shifting. There are people here, you're tired of certain situations. You're tired of a condition. You have waited for so long. You have been in that place for so long. Some people even say you're stagnant. This is your shifting season. This is your shifting moment. Ah, ah, I'm getting more people to tap into it. You see, the way we tap into the prophetic you are, we must be radical to be able to receive. Hallelujah. I understand you're so calm, but in this season of the shifting, you don't have to be calm. You have to grab a word by faith because the Bible says that just shall live by faith, not by sight. Declare three times, this is my season of shifting. This is my season of shifting. This is my season of shifting. Some of you, you have rented for so long, yet the Bible says we shall build houses and sleep in them. Some of you, you have been walking to church, yet these cars are, part, are supposed to be our things. You're single, you're believing God for a husband, for a wife. They are nowhere to be seen. You're shifting. This is your season of safety. Hey. This is a season of shifting. Can I get to people, three people here? Preach to three people and tell them, this is my season of shifting. I am shifting. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am shifting. This is my season. I am shifting. The people you see who are declaring it is not that they are not hurting. They are going through something. But they know it has come to an end. They know that that has come to an end. This is my shift season of shifting. This is my season of shifting. I am 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 shifting. You know my old story, but my story is over. Get ready for the new thing God is about to do in our lives. Kawempe Worship Center. We are shifting. This is our season of shifting. We are shifting. Tears may endure in the night, but joy comes in the morning. The season has come. Got to turn our morning into dancing. Break out la bossa. Take three minutes. I want you to pray, tapping into a new season. Everyone pray, tap into a shifting season. Everyone pray. I don't hear you pray. I don't hear you pray. Pray radically. Pray like you've been in that situation for so long and you're tired. Are there people in this place who are tired of being tired? You're tired of being tired. Rika Talabosia. Mande de Brete Kaya. Brete Brete Katata. We are shifting. Me and my family, we are shifting. As a church going to worship center, we are shifting from where they know us from. We are shifting. You have one more minute and a half. You have one more minute and a half. 
it's your season of shifting. So your shifting. You are shifting. This is the year of the Holy Spirit. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, He moves us. He's moving us from a place of stagnation to a new place, to a new level. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Listen, the book of Joshua, chapter number one from the second verse, the book of Joshua, the first chapter, the first verse. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Ephlets, all the land of the Hittites, and the great city where the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I'll not leave you, nor forsake you. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I saw to their fathers to give them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Verses number 7. Number 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. There is bad success? Yes. Then you will have good success. Verses, let me go to verses number 11. Pass through the camp and command the people saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you'll cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Verses number 13. I've skipped to number 12. Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. Let's go to verses number 18 down. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him shall be put to death on a be strong and of good courage. Chapter number 2, the first verse. Now Joshua the son of Nun sent out two men from Akasha Group to spy secretly saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of Harod named Rahab and lodged there, lodging in the house of a harlot. Let's go to verses number 9 of the second chapter of the book of Joshua. And uh -huh. Let me start with verses number 8. Now before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you the land that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. Let's go to, to chapter number 3 verses 5. Chapter number 3 verses 5 of the book of Joshua. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify 
yourselves. For tomorrow, for tomorrow, for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. For tomorrow, God will do wonders among you. For tomorrow, for tomorrow, God will do wonders among you. Let's go to the 60th chapter, verses number 20. The 60th chapter of the book of Joshua, verses number 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the, the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city, and they took the city, and they took the city, and they took there has been there had been a generation of uh, Moses. Hey, you can go and sit. Thank you so much. Everyone, you can take your seats. Thank you. We bless the Lord for what he's doing in our maidies. We bless the Lord for our father, our coach of the house, and the first lady of Kawempe Worship Center, Pastor Robert and Mama Robina Kasozi. We celebrate you. We love you. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Ah. Uh. Is that how we celebrate our spiritual authority? Our father and the mother. If you want to be celebrated, you need to learn to celebrate the authority. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Can we celebrate them one more time? Our generation, we have not learned to celebrate the authority, the spiritual leaders. But it's so important. Praise the Lord. Then... Uh, my father, my guardian, uh, Uncle Paul and Susan Bukenya. Can you help me celebrate them? Yeah. Celebrate them one more time. Yeah. And then uh, Pastor Taka Sekawere, Achakunganye Zebienda. They just gave birth to a baby boy called the nation Zitaka. Can we celebrate them? Can we celebrate the entire pastoral team of Kawempe Worship Center? Now let's celebrate all the ministers of Kawempe Worship Center. This is the season to be proud that these are your leaders, these are our pastors. This is the best time for you to be proud because they are leading us. They are leading us into a new season. Praise the Lord. Now let's celebrate you for being here. Celebrate yourself. Some people even can't celebrate themselves. Can you celebrate yourself? Yeah. The same way you're celebrating yourself, that's the same way you shall be celebrated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There had been a season of Moses. Moses had an anointing of enduring. Moses had an anointing of surviving. He led the children of Israel in the wilderness. They survived in the wilderness. They endured the famine in the wilderness. They endured the pain in the wilderness. But time came, as time has come now, and the Lord himself announced the death of Moses. God himself announced the end of the chapter of Moses. And he said, Moses, my servant is dead. For them, they didn't know that even Moses was dead. But the Lord himself announces the death of his servant, Moses. Like there are many people, you don't really understand that there is an end to a season. And God has to speak through me to, to, 
to tell you that there is an end. The old season is over. Hallelujah. Now God gave the children of Israel a number of, so a number of days to moon. And when the days, the number of days for mourning were over, the Lord tells them the former grace of enduring and surviving is over. Now I want you to tap into a new grace of possessing the promises of God. The grace which, which was on Moses was to endure and to survive. He didn't have the grace to possess the promises of God. A new re leader arises because Moses' chapter had come to an end. So there was a closure of a chapter that was over. Now, a new chapter had to be opened. Moses was a very good man. He was a wonderful man. It was a wonderful season for Moses. He led the children of Israel through the wilderness, through the terrain of the desert. He led them through all that. It was a very difficult season, but he led them through all that season. Now, he raises a Joshua who was a fighter, who was a warrior, who was a, a possessor of the promises of God. Can I announce right now that we have entered a season, a new grace of the Joshua anointing, which is the anointing of a warrior, which is the anointing of the possessor of the promises of God. Am I talking to the right people? In this season, we have entered into the fighter in us must arise. The warrior in us must arise. Hallelujah. Moses was dead and God gave them a certain number of days to weep for Moses. When the day of mourning was over, God said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now dry your faces. Stop weeping. The time for crying is over. Yes, you have been through the wilderness, but that season is over. Can I speak to someone here today? You have been weeping of what happened today. You have been crying of a disappointment. You have been crying of a heartbreak. Can I declare to you today that that season is over? Everything you have been trying has been failing. When you count the things you have tried, there are many. You're even scared. Can I try a new thing? Because whatever I try has been failing. The season for mourning is over. That season of disappointment is 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 stop crying of who left your life. Stop crying of those who disappointed you. That season has come to an end. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every guy who comes to me, he promises to, mar to marry me, he stops on the way. That season is over. Now the one who is coming, is coming with the intentions of marrying you. The season for Jaribu is over. You have stepped into a new season of shifting. In this season of shifting, everything is changing. Everything about you is changing. I've been struggling with tuition. I don't know if I'll study and finish. That season has come to an end. I don't know where money is going to come from, but one thing I heard the Lord say last night is a season of shifting. The doctor said, I cannot live longer. I must die at a certain age. 
Those who are supposed to die in the wilderness, they died. The fact that you're here <laughs> in the Joshua anointing, yeah, you cannot die until you possess the promises of God. So this is the season of crossing over. Uh, have they understood? This is the season of crossing over. Eh? This is the season of crossing over. How many people believe in God to cross over from poverty, to cross over from renting, to cross over from singlehood, to cross over from being in one place? There is stagnation in your life, but you want to cross over. You're tired of being stagnant, and you want to cross over. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Let me declare, this is your season of crossing over. speak to Kawempe Worship Center as a church, as a ministry. We have been in the season. Pastor Kawesa used to do things like this. He used to do the things like this. Mama, hear me. That season, the Lord says, it's over, has raised a Joshua among us who is taking us to the promises of God. Yes, there, 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 there is a word of God the Lord gave to Pastor Kawesa and said, this is it, this is it. But in this season, there are new instructions which are coming through a Joshua. Our Joshua today is Pastor Robert Kasozi. The Lord has appointed him in a season like this. In this season, he's going to be by instructions. He's going to gather us. He will say, it's time to pray now. It's time to fast now. It's time to worship now. The season we have entered into is a season of instructions. Whoever is going to get into a new season, whoever is going to possess the possessions of God, you must hearken to the instructions of the Joshua among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some things may, may be inconveniencing us. He may tell us you have to sleep at the church. It may be inconveniencing us. But if we are to possess our possessions, we must hearken to that word. We are not going to get there unless we follow the instructions. Give Jesus a no praise. In every time there is, in every situation there is a shifting God will raise a leader to help you get into where God wants you to be this season is not a season of rebellion people Pastor Taco Webwing, in Avoca, they call them rebels. <laughs> this is not the season for rebellious people. This is not the season for the rebels. This is the season to follow the instructions. Joshua told them in the third chapter, verses number five, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow God will do wonders among you. Praise the Lord. And the, that tomorrow is now. You have waited for your tomorrow for so long. Your tomorrow is now. Some of you as I speak, as you leave this place, you're going to get a phone call. That's what you have been waiting for. It's here. There are people you're demanding money. They are going to call you this week because your tomorrow is now. Some of you have been believing God for ministry partners you have an organization you're believing god to bring you funders the time has come and the time is now you have been mourning for so long the bible says tears may endure in the night but joy comes in the morning your morning has come and god shall fill your mouth with laughters hallelujah the lord tells moses the time for grieving has come to an end. The time for those who are being 
frustrated. That time is over. Those who are feeling tired in the spirit, that time is over. Pick up yourself. That time of mourning is over. Hallelujah. You're feeling so lonely. That time of loneliness is over. That time of being depressed is over. It is over. Your period of mourning is over. The tears you cried yesterday, the tears you had this morning before you came here, those were the last tears. The tears you had yesterday, you cried your last tear yesterday. Do you hear me? You cried your last tear yesterday. Can you speak to yourself and say, I cried my last tear yesterday. Say it like you believe it. I cried my last tear yesterday. Can you help me to speak to three people? Get up and speak to three people and tell them, assure them, I cried my last tear yesterday. I cried my last tear yesterday. I cried my last tear yesterday. Say it three times. I cried my last tear yesterday. I cried my last tear yesterday. I cried my last tear yesterday. You saw me cry. You saw me grieving. You saw me hurt. You saw me disappointed. But I cried my last tear yesterday. I cried my last tear yesterday. I was hurt. That was yesterday. I was disappointed. That was in my yesterday. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But today I got my fight back. Take care. I've got my fight back. I've got my faith back. I've got my my courage back. I've gotten back to my feet. I'm back on my feet. Yes. Yes. I've gotten my faith back. I don't know about you, but I've gotten my faith back. I lost an erection, but I've gotten my faith back. I've gotten my courage back. I've gotten my fight back. I'm going to fight again. I've made losses. I've made losses. But now I've gotten my courage back. The people I trusted disappointed me. They hurt me. They said, You're no longer our son. But today I've got my courage back. I've got my faith back. I've gotten it back. <laughs> people you're getting your faith back you're getting your courage back yeah 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 you're getting it back you lost to someone but you're getting your courage back now you were hurt but you're getting your courage back ah, yeah 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 we have entered into a season where we're going to speak like i'm forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching to things which are before I'm forgetting everything which is behind me. Now I'm reaching out to the things which are before me. I know my future is greater. I know my tomorrow is greater. I have a funny background, but I know my tomorrow is better than yesterday. I know, I know that I know that I know that my tomorrow is better than yeah, 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 you can sit down. Something I find very interesting. Joshua, listen, Joshua sent two spies in the second chapter. Yet Joshua had been a spy before. During the time of Moses, Joshua was among the spies. Now we see him. In his time, he also chooses two people to go and spy. Why? Why does Joshua has also to have spies? There are two things I got from here as I, I read my Bible. I got to understand you cannot lead people into anything that they don't have a vision for. Huh? 
you cannot lead people into anything they don't have a vision for Joshua wanted for him had already seen where he was taking them but he needed some two witnesses from among them to go and see where God is taking them that's why in this season people some people are going to have dreams of where God is taking us such that the one who is leading us yeah and I've seen it before people come and whisper to pastor Robert this is what I have seen this is what I have seen why God is doing that why is he revealing it to other people because God knows it's very difficult one man who is the only one seeing where he's taking us to have the vision has to reveal to more people also to be witnesses that what the pastor is taking us what he's telling us is true this is where we are going we are going to possess the land we are going to possess the promises of God. We are going to build houses. We are going to have children. We are going to have successful marriages. We are going to have every promise of God come to pass. For me, that was the first reason. The second reason why Joshua had to send the spies. God wanted the people to be excited of the promise. They needed to be excited of the promise. We enter promises by excitement. Why? Because it's a process to get where God is taking us. It's a season of shifting, but it's going to be a process. We may have to come here spending nights in prayer. We may have to leave our food to go into prayer and fasting. It's a process. If you don't have a vision, depression will come in through the process and you lose what you are about to possess. Hallelujah. So you need a vision to see where you're going. Now you need excitement to stir you up and to help you through the process. So interesting that when God shows you that I'm taking you to the land full of honey and milk, he does not show that you'll have to cross River Jordan. He shows you the end. He doesn't show you what is in between. Praise the Lord. Now, the vision helps you to keep focused on where God is taking you. Now, the excitement helps you. Even when you face the Red Sea, you say, what is this? It is too small to the promise of God. So you are able to press on. Temptations come. You feel like giving up on God. You feel like sleeping around with men and women. But you say, because of this promise, because of the vision I have, I cannot waste my time on this earthly things. I have to get to the promise of God. Hallelujah. 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 So every time discouragement hits you, yeah, you'll always look towards your vision and say, yeah, I'm building this house. I don't have any money to push on but God promised that I shall build a house and sleep in it. Glory to God. I remember time the Lord had promised me that you'll have a wonderful wedding, a successful wedding. And it was two weeks to the wedding. We, have not, we had not hit even a quarter of the bar. So inside me I started complaining and murmuring. Why is this one not helping me? Why is that one has money? Why is he not giving me the money? And at that time, my focus was just on what the Lord said. That you will have a successful wedding. And I remember we were in the meeting with the Lord Mayor. And I get a phone call from the president. The phone call was not meant to be mine. It was meant to be for another person. And I remember speaking like I had to seize the moment. I spoke what I'm supposed to take for five minutes I spoke it in 30 seconds I had to seize the moment 
Mr. President, as if I was praying in the Holy Ghost. And he said, the ghost law, I want here. What are you saying, my angel? So I explained myself. At that time, my focus was the vision. What is the vision for your life? What is that word the Lord told you? Today things are not going on well. But what's the promise? Yes, we are here as the church. But what's the promise you as an individual? The promise for the church. We are going to take over that land. We are going to take over all that land. But if you don't have a personal promise, you will say the things are for the pastors and their children. That's all you will see. But you are, when you have a personal vision, there is a way you see yourself fitting in the vision. You will not be forced to come here and pray, spend the nights to pray. You will come here and people will say, I see this face every day. I see this guy every day. Because you have a reason to keep in the presence of God. You have a vision. So that excitement stares you up and you feel, I can't be in the bed. I have to run to church. You single man, you single girl, what are you doing in the bed? It's the season to possess the land. What are you doing in the bed? I'm a sadja with Baba Wabuzi. Django Sabi. But in the bed, you change this side, you change this side. Before you know it, you masturbate it. Instead, come back again. Praise the Lord. Before I close, there are three things I would like to talk about here in my reading. I have. We learn from uh, Joshua. And we learn from this chapter. There's something, a point I see here positioning. Say positioning. Say positioning. Something which is interesting. Rahab was a harlot, was a prostitute. She was not meant to be part of the promise. Yeah? A harlot, everyone, no one could believe that a harlot could be part of the promise. But her house was strategic. The house of Rahab was at the wall of Jericho. You hear that? It was at a strategic place. Now, when the spies came in, she had to give them space where to stay, and she hid them. You see, how, how positioning is so important that even when you're not part of the promise, there is a way you find yourself in the promise because of the positioning. Hallelujah. The Baganda have a saying, Atari Watagwiba Muti. You know that saying. Now, in this season, it's about the positioning. Positioning. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, the reason why you have been through the messes of life, you've been through the storms, those storms are trying to position you. What you're going through right now, it is positioning you to the place where God wants you to be so that you can be able to possess the promises of God. Without that storm, you cannot be positioned. It is the storm which is positioning you today. There are many people are hating you at your workplace. God is positioning you because your time has come to an end in that workplace. God wants you to a new place. Without that storm, you cannot get into the place where God wants you to be. Praise the Lord. So stop asking, why am I going through all what I'm going through? No, God is using all that to position you to the right purpose. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's why in this season, you must have a good attitude. A good attitude. Whatever happens to you, have a good attitude. Attitude. Because in this season, positioning is key. It's so important. Ask the lady of the issue of the blood. 
She had spent all the money she had. But then she heard that Jesus was going to pass by. She positioned herself and said, even if I touch her garment, it shall be well. She positioned herself and what happened in the end? The bleeding was no more. So in this season, positioning is very important. You're not going to be everywhere. This is the season where in the, we walk in the scripture of God which says the footsteps of a righteous man are guided by the things you're walking to church. You find a person and tells you we have a party. Why don't you join us? You say, hey, I didn't you know. You turn. I'll pray next to Sunday. Out of the Hallelujah. Amen. Some people is on his one when is there to come to church. Someone calls, Can I take you to KFC? Someone says, After all, I last took KFC before COVID. Let's go. I'll pray next Wednesday. I will be Hallelujah. The second thing in this season exposure. Say exposure. Say it don't scare me. Say exposure. Exposure. Joshua sent the spies and he was trying to expose the next generation to what he was seeing. There is something he was seeing, but the generation he had could not see it. So he had to expose them. In this season, there are things God is going to expose us to. Exposure is going to be so important to each one of us. God has promised us, He's taking us. We are going to have it. We are going to have all that place. Now, for you, you have never seen a church bigger than this. When we speak, you're like, ah, how? You even laugh. You forget that there is a man in Nigeria who has a church with 600,000 people. For you, this building of 1,000, you feel that's the biggest. Even when we come here and we say, a cathedral, 5,000 people, you laugh. My money will not go there. Can we really construct? A church of 5,000 people. God, you're going to find yourself being exposed to things you have never prayed for. Some of you right now, the house you're believing God to build is among these houses. God is going to expose you to houses. You'll go to Pastor Kassos' house and you say, Eh! Come there are houses like this. I remember the, last, the first time. I went with my brother Newton to UK. From here, he used to say, Museven is the best leader in the world. Look at the roads. Because he was comparing Kampala to Mitoma, where he comes from. When we landed, the first time we landed in UK, he said, Ah, Look at the roads here. <laughs> we spoke to him, no one. The exposure spoke to him. He found that people had the roads worked on even going to their gardens. And he asked, why do they waste money like this? He said, we pay taxes. Now he's in Oyamazara, D.C. I went there to see him on, on Wednesday. I saw what he was speaking to the local leaders, to the chairman of C5 of Oyam, the DSOs, and other people and were saying, we can do this, we can do this. I said, look at what the exposure does. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What is going to help us to change this place is the exposure. Hallelujah. So when God exposes you to something, don't question. When someone says my wedding is in Munyonyo, go there and see. Hallelujah. And see how things are done in Munyonyo. Because the best wedding you have seen now was here. In Kawempe. Every time you pray, my wedding shall be like that one which was in Kawempe Worship Center. This is the season God is going to expose you. Hallelujah. To what he wants you to possess. 
You see, I love I love Elisha and Elijah. I love them so much because uh, Elisha speaks to, to 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 Elijah and tells him, "Please leave me with what you have. I want it." And 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 in a in a certain version, Elijah tells Elisha that if you see what I see, you shall have double of it. You must see what I see. <laughs> Does if you see what I see, you must see what the pastoral team sees to be able to possess the promises of God. It's going to be very hard. We are seeing this, you're seeing the other, and you think you'll be able to possess the promises of God. Today you're here, you're, you're with another pastor seeing something different, then on another day you're in another church seeing something different, then you come here and you're questioning what we see. The problem is not us. You're exposed to things which are not important. Hallelujah. The last thing. I like to talk about here is courage. Say courage. Say courage. Rahab had the courage. You see, she's the king of Jericho got to know that this lady had hidden the spies who are coming. The rebels who are coming to overtake the land. But she had the courage to keep them. In this season, you need the courage to get to where God is taking you. Praise the Lord. She had the courage to take on what she believed. Do you have the courage to take on what you believe inside of you? Do you have the courage? You believe God that nations are in your I, uh, uh, your inheritance. Do you have the courage? You believe that you're going to build houses, not one house, but houses. Do you have the courage inside of you to take it on? You believe that one day you're going to own an arcade in town. You're going to do businesses and you'll be on top of the city. Do you have the courage? Hmm? This lady had the courage even to be killed because she risked her life. Lying to the king of Jericho, it was a high risk, but she had the courage. Praise the Lord. It takes courage to succeed. It takes courage to prosper. It takes courage to be different. It takes courage to be in a place you have never been before. Do you have the courage? It takes courage to be exceptional. Do you have the courage? Do you have the courage? We started with a young man who used to dream. He's going to learn to nations. But even in school, he could sleep and even miss, misses out on preps. When they found him sleeping, he could say, I'm sick. The man fell sick every week. Now he's one of the thieves in the city. Did, did you, do you have the courage to take on what you believe inside of you? Do you have the courage? Praise the Lord. Do you have the courage to wait for the right one? You are believing God for a man after God is on heart. Do you have the courage to wait? May we stand. You stand. In this season, the positioning is very important. And we cannot hide from the exposure. God is going to expose us. Courage is so important to us in this season. Do you have the courage? Do you have the courage? I remember a time we were praying inside there. Every Friday could pray for me inside there. And I remember I had my friends and I was believing God. I had gotten a premium and I was believing God for a new car. And I was believing God for Benz. And I remember my friend tapping me and putting me aside and said, Solomon, why are you praying for Benz? Do you have the money to buy that? I said, that's why I'm praying. Because I know I, I cannot buy it myself. That's why I'm saying it to God. He said, but, but will you have money, Solomon? Will you have the money to maintain the car? I told him, that's why I'm speaking to God. I had the 
my courage to take on what I believe. There are voices saying, you cannot, but may I have the courage. Let me tell you, child of God, I bought them egg pens. Now I finished that one. Now I just brought in a new Mercedes Benz. I have nothing to do for you if you're feeling jealousy. I have nothing to do, but I have courage to take on what I believe inside of me. I believe that the best is my portion. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. Praise the Lord. Then, then ah. Uh, I've seen my people coming back to me. So last, last Sunday, I had to leave this place earlier because uh, my mother and my uncles came. They had to visit the family of my father-in-law. So my uncle, so my candy said, are you, you, you my angel, you're driving a car worth 170 millions. I don't know who told him the price. You're driving a car worth 170 millions? He said, Mwana to Suaziza. Is the man who was behind my chasing. He said, We don't need him. We don't want him. Has bought a car in the family. But it's the man who said, You drive a car worth 170 millions? You have not ashamed us. Now, when we had seated as a Families that that they said, Ono mana tatu swaziza. Ere wa fe bowe zemia kumi na mnana ngokola choyagara. Why didn't he say those things before? But you know, I had the courage to take on what I believe inside of me. I knew that one day it shall come to pass. Let me tell you. You know my story. How I slept in the pit latrine. I was homeless. By the time Uncle Po came and picked me up, and they said, now. We are taking you on. I was sleeping in the pit latrine. Pit latrine was my home. Now I was in UK. And then I was speaking. After speaking, the lady came to me crying and said, the, the Holy Spirit has told me to give, I give you my piece of land. I have a piece of land I bought five minutes from the university. I'm supposed to construct hostels. Me who didn't have an idea to, to build hostels, someone has to give me her land next to the university and she gave me the title crying do you have the courage do you have the courage it has taken courage there are times I felt like giving up but I had to have courage to press on do you have courage to keep coming and pray there was a time we came here every Friday night to pray and things were not easy the pastor Robert had just come here and there was a lot of resistance people were fighting even us praying one time someone brought a sick child and we're praying and someone I think had, had something with Musumba Robert. He came to us. He came from Musumba's office and he came to us and said, they have brought a sick person here. After all, come and pray. You're the only one who pray. Is there another person who prays? Meaning that he thought he was not appreciated. It was very easy for us to stop praying to get discouraged. But we had the courage to push on praying. We had the courage to say they may not believe in Pastor Robert, but God has brought him as our Joshua. We, we, had, we had the courage to continue serving him. And he came with a vision that he saw young people in his ministry going in nations taking the gospel and before he came here we had never traveled before when he got here that we got into his promise of sending young people into nations to preach now it is coming to pass because we are serving a man's vision and we have the courage to serve him. So every promise on his life, if there is a promise that he will pass the presidents, we shall become presidents. If there is a promise on his life that he will pass the MPs, we shall become MPs. If there is a promise on his life that will pastor ministers, we shall become ministers. If, even if we are not made to become ministers, we shall become. And we have the courage to push on until we become. Of 
Vincent he said here that he had a vision all of us were go going to build houses even if in your family no one has ever built a house the fact that you are here serving the vision of Pastor Robert you shall build that house the point is do you have the courage do you have the courage ask your neighbor do you have the courage do you have the courage before I left, before I traveled, he was here. I had not even attended the Wednesday service. My wife was from work, she had connected. I had a meeting, so she called and she said, There is a prophecy. Pastor Robert is giving to you. Can you tune in? I connected, and Pastor Casos was saying, You're going to travel on this trip. You're going to meet a man, and this man will connect you to nations. And when I got there, the Lord connected me to that man who has connected me, has a prayer network of all nations. Nations. And one of the guys said, a man of God, are you willing to come to, to nowhere? I said, let me pray about it. <laughs> said, let me pray about it. If I can come to nowhere, and when I can come to nowhere. Yesterday I found his message saying, man of God, I still believe that you're waiting on God to speak to you. I've spoken, he says I was from Shambagas Church in U.S. I've spoken to people who are from Shambag in U.S. I've spoken to other people in South Africa. When you're ready, let me know. When you're ready to travel, let me know. I said, wow such a quality problem do you have the courage to take on what you believe inside of you all what I've gone through was positioning me hallelujah and the Lord brings me to men of God to men like elder Paul had an exposure to expose me the first time I went to his house I asked him what have you done to make to this point I remember him saying Solomon what do you want me to answer I, I don't know but I've been working but inside me I wanted to know I wanted to get an exposure to how you do it to succeed hallelujah I remember when I was trying to make it, I went to my told him, I want to do business. He bought me the first fridge. All that God was exposing me. God was exposing me. I'm not a businessman. It's not my thing. I know what God has called me for, and I'm doing it perfectly. Because I have the courage. I have the courage. I thank God for the storm. I thank God for all I've been through because it has exposed me to, to, to the right position where I am now and I have now the courage to become whatever God has destined me to become. I know the time is coming. Praise the Lord. When all eyes shall be on this country because of us, Kawempo Worship Center, I know my going to nations is just a step to, to have an exposure such that many young people in this church, many young people in this nation can see where God wants us to be. Hallelujah. We are God for nations. He says, ask of me and the nations shall be. Take one minute. Speak to God. Speak to God. Take one minute. Take one minute. We are closing. Take one minute. Those who can pray in the heavenly language, can you open your mouth? Pray in the heavenly language. Pray in the Holy Ghost. prayer warriors in this place the Joshua anointing they are courageous there is shouting when the way they pray they shout they hear them Mando de Bosia. Position your people, God. Position your people in the right place so that they can possess the promises of God. This is their season of shifting, O oh God. I pray that no one of us shall miss out on the shifting season. We bless you, Lord. Give God a hand of praise.
You can do better than that. Give God a mighty hand of praise. Shout like a Joshua. Shout like a Joshua. I don't think that's enough shout which put the walls of Jericho down. Shout one more time, glory! Glory! Shout one more time, glory! the Lord. Let me just give you a sneak peek of one of the dreams I had last night. And you know, I saw a lot of new things in these dreams, but one of the things that I saw, I'm driving and then I suddenly realize I'm wearing a military uniform that I have not seen anywhere. (laughs) I suddenly realized there was something different about me. The Lord is doing new things. Thank you so much, Pastor Solomon, for sharing those words. And if you understood anything, you would understand that in this season, the Lord has released something. Yours is to lock in. Have the courage to lock in. Have the courage to get in. Have the courage to, you know. (laughs) Hallelujah. We really must close for the first service so that we allow the people who have come in for second service to come in. Lift up your hands and let's bless the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you for your people. Thank you for the season. Thank you that you're a God who has spoken from those days. You have spoken to our forefathers. You still speak to us today. We welcome your word. We welcome the words that you have spoken through your servant Solomon Mayanja. In the name of Jesus, we welcome the season that you've ushered us into, that you've opened up for us. We welcome the new things that you're doing in our lives, round about our lives, in our nation, concerning the things that concern us. You have spoken in your word that you will perfect that which concerns us. And as we get into this week, we get into that word and we capture ourselves into your word. We bless your name. For we bless the week that's ahead of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Yes, um, all right. Just two important things that I need to, to highlight. Just tell your neighbor, 15th October. I think that neighbor never heard you turn to another one and say 15th October. Turn to a third one behind you now. Say 15th October. All right. Let me tell you why that date is important. You know, in this church we believe in marriage. Where marriage means a male male man goes and marries a woman, female woman and they are joined together in holy matrimony and you'll notice that our entire pastoral team that is how we are a team of close to 10 couples and we strongly believe in marriage so on 15th october our pastors robert and robina will be celebrating their 25 years (laughs) yeah Now I know you guys believe in marriage and I know you believe in celebrating those who make it. So get ready. Because what's happening is that there is a committee that has been set aside to prepare that date. We shall be in Munyonyo. Oh yeah. The place is already paid for. But we still need you to contribute as a church because there is particular responsibilities we have. We'll be communicating more about that. So we know you've been giving so much, but it's a different season, eh? You know, it's a different season, right? Now, when we talk about your money, please don't start getting stingy. It's a different season. So we'll be contributing something towards that so that we are a blessing to them. So just get ready for that. Amen? And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever.